Hello, I'm Carolyn and you may have already watched my other video on creating nested shapes with tile clones. Since I made that video, I've been playing a lot more with tile clones to create nested shapes and I've found a much easier method if you like working with coloured images. The other video will be perfect if you like working with just a stroke line. Now for this method, I actually start with the largest image and to save time, I'll just use the largest one from here and just delete the rest. Now to work with this in full colour, I need to unset the existing colour. If I look down here, I can see I'm only working with fill and no stroke line. Now to unset the colour, I'm just going to right click on the fill and then click on unset fill. Now this will turn black, you'll see later on this will change. So I've got my shape and I've unset the colour. Now I'll go edit, clone, create tiled clones. Before I continue, I'm just going to hit the reset button. So if I've previously made changes in any of these tabs, it will now return to default. Symmetry, I'm going to leave it P1, simple translation. Rows, I'm going to leave it 1. Now columns, I've currently got 10. So that's going to give me 10 new shapes. So if you only wanted 6, you would enter 6. The number you enter in columns will be the number of new shapes that you want. Then I'll open the Shift tab. In column at Shift X, I'm going to change the setting to minus 100. By changing this to minus 100, it means all my new shapes will be centrally aligned. If you forget this step, you will still get the new shapes, but they will be horizontal across the screen instead of neatly aligned on top of one another. Then I'll open the Scale tab. And in Column, I'm going to change a few settings. At Scale X, I'm going to change it to minus 10. And at Scale Y, I'll change it to minus 10. Now I'll just explain why I've done this. You can see that this is a percentage. By making it minus 10, it means each new nested shape will be 10% smaller than the previous one. Now, as I'm starting with the largest, I want to work down to the smallest. I've entered a minus number. Why I've entered the same number for scale X and scale Y is to maintain the proportions. If I entered different numbers here, the shape would actually start changing and I'll give a quick example at the end of the video. Now we move to the colour tab. At the moment this looks black but to select your starting colour up here where it says initial colour just click on that then you can select a colour. So I might just choose a darker blue and close that. Once again I'm going to change settings in column only. So here we've got hue, shade and light. You can experiment and change your settings to get the look you want. Now I find I only need to change the settings in hue. Now if I make it a really small number, say 2, then click on create, I get a very subtle change in colour. And if I don't like the blue, I can just click on initial colour and change it to something else. So say I start with pink or red, Close it. While the original is still selected, I can just click on create. I get a totally different look. Now that was at 2%. If I change this to 10%, click on create, I get a very dramatic change of colour. And if I change it to 50%, I tend to get a striped effect. So what I would suggest in colour is just experiment with different settings. When you get a look you like, write it down in a notebook so you can duplicate it later on. So I'm actually just going to change this back to 10%. An initial colour, I'm going to change back to blue. And click Create. So I can keep making changes to this as many times as I want without having to undo as long as the original shape is selected. And that's how easy it is to do tiled clones. I'll just come back to the scale tab 
and just explain something. Now at the moment, I've got that at minus 10 and I've got 10 columns. Now you watch if I change this to 20 and click on create. You can see I've actually only got five. Because we're working from largest to smallest, you can't go any further than 100%. So 20 times 10 is 200%. So if at any stage you're trying this and you enter a large number in columns and you wonder why you don't get that number, it's because you've gone over 100%. So let's just return this to 10. Click on Create. Now I mentioned previously that the shape currently selected is the original. I'm just going to zoom in. Let's just move this blue one aside you can see the original is actually sitting underneath all the nested shapes. And this blue one here is actually identical to the black. While this original one is still here, all these clones are linked to it. So you either delete it, or if it's hidden and it's not selected and you don't know where it is, all you have to do is drag the mouse around all the shapes, click on this icon here of an open padlock and it will unlink them. I find two big advantages with making nested shapes this way. One, there is no distortion between the shapes. So each shape is an accurate representation of the original. The other advantage is I've already got these settings here. So all I have to do is draw another shape, make sure the fill is unset, click on create. So if I've got settings in here that I like, I can make lots of nested shapes really fast. And to just finish the video off, I'm just going to draw a circle. Now I can see down in fill that the colour's unset, so I'm ready to go. At scale X, I'll leave it 10%. Scale Y, I might change to 20%. Then I'll click on Create. And you can see what happens. We've changed from a circle down to an oval. So for some of your nested shapes, you can take advantage by using different settings and changing your shape as the increments change. So if when you're designing your files, you like to make a whole set of different sizes for cutting, you might like to try using tile clones to create your own nested shapes. And if you'd like more ideas, feel free to visit my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you.